Hello, this is Mark Franklin of Streaming Media Magazine and Streaming Media Producer. I'm going to tell you about the camera I just reviewed, the JVC GYHC 550, the uh, connected cam, and it is quite a camera. It is heavy duty. It is not only heavy duty, it's heavy. This is uh, not a compact camera, but it has lots of features, so while it is large, uh, you do get a lot packed into this uh, large body. Uh, first thing we'll show you is the large view screen. It's got a nice uh, regular viewfinder also. This side of the body is everything you need to control this camera is going to be found generally on this side of the camera. Uh, not much on back, pretty much nothing on back. Everything is here except uh, the thumb required that's on the lens control side of the camera. This is a joystick that you will use to navigate all the menus. And it's uh, fairly easy to do. The menu structure itself is a little odd, takes some getting used to, especially if you've been using other cameras. But um, it was, uh, once you learn it, it's not too hard to understand. Um, one thing you do have to keep in mind if while you are switching uh, frame sizes or codecs, the camera does have to reboot, so you're going to need to take an extra um, about a minute to make that change and let the camera restart. So don't plan to just switch uh, your frame size or frame rate and get on shooting. You need to let the camera reboot. But here's the standard on off button mode, allows you to play back. Uh, the footage that you just shot, the standard uh, focus manual auto, like on most cameras, four position neutral density switch, you got six, one sixty fourth, one sixteenth, a quarter, and off. You have three rings on the lens: the zoom, focus, and iris. And it works very well. It's a very nice lens. It's got a one inch CMOS sensor, and it. Uh, is pretty good in low light, not quite as good in low light as the Canon XF705, which we use extensively here. But uh, again, this camera is about $2,000 less than the XF705 and has some other features, which I'm going to show you on the other side, that uh, most other cameras don't have. So let's turn it around here. It's probably not the microphone mount that you're looking at. It's like, what are these two antennas? It's not for two channels of wireless microphones. No, this is your wireless LAN connection. So if you want to do a live streaming on Facebook, YouTube, and a, a few other services are being added, this camera will connect directly to your network and stream right from the camera. When you go into the menu, tell it's going to live stream. It generates a QR code on the, the screen. You use your phone, uh, scan that QR code, and it connects to whatever Facebook, YouTube account that you have set up. There is a button for going live, and when you hit that, you go live. You just have to remember to also hit the record button if you want to record, which most of us do, as uh, going live will record to your Facebook page, but if you want to have something high quality to edit, um, you need to remember to hit record on the camera itself. Uh, the camera does have two built-in microphones, a built-in stereo microphone in here. Uh, it's okay, don't recommend it. I recommend Asden SGM250 as my go-to uh, shotgun microphone for production. On the top here, you've got the top zoom controls and record like many cameras have. Here, it's showing off, you can do uh, fixed, variable, or off it's for that zoom control. Under the LCD, you have uh, the usual audio controls that you'll find on most cameras. All switches so you don't have to go into the menu to uh, do things, which is always a lot quicker to do than having to go through pages and pages of menus. On the back side of the camera, uh, it's very easy to open up and get to the various connectors. Here's the HDMI connector and the stereo three and a half millimeter auxiliary mic input. 
Uh, there's a, a USB connector. Um, so if you want to, I think you can plug in another USB wireless LAN. Here is a, an Ethernet connector. This is HD-SDI. You can't get 4K out of uh, the HD-SDI. Just uh, regular HD, 1080, 60p is where it maxes out. Here's DC in, so if you can use a power supply, you're running low on batteries. And here's a remote. This actually uses the Sony protocol LANC uh, control thing. So if you have a, uh, using Sony or Canon uh, video cameras before, you can plug your zoom and start stop control right into the JVC and it works great. Over here, you have two SD card slots. On this camera, the maximum Ultra HD 4K uh, recording on the SD cards is 30p. If you want to do super high quality recording on this camera, there is an option to get a caddy to house a M.2 SSD that goes right into this slot in the camera here. We used a one terabyte SSD, which got us about uh, an hour and I think 15 minutes. 4K 60p ProRes HQ is uh, about 12 gigabytes a minute. So, you know, the bigger the better if you're going to go that route. Uh, most people, for most industrial corporate shooting, even broadcast, the SD cards will do you fine. But if you actually need that super high quality, then uh, you'll need to get this optional SSD caddy and you put in it whatever size M.2 SSD you'd like to put in it. When you're done recording on the SSD, uh, there is a regular USB 3 type C connector on the caddy. So you could just take a simple cord and plug it into uh, a USB 3 port on your computer and transfer away. One thing I liked about this camera, despite its size and its capabilities, it really did well with batteries. They're large batteries, um, but they really lasted a long time. This is their largest. It's got a built-in power meter on it. This one lasted in the camera over three hours, which is great. GYH C550 is a 7.2 volt camera. Despite its large size, I was surprised to find out that it is only a 7.2 volt uh, camera. When I use the XF705, I don't think I've ever gotten two hours on a single battery. The XF705 is a bit power hungry. The most you're going to get out of the XF705, if you want to check out the review I did on that, is uh, about 110 minutes. The GYHC550 is a great camera, but it's a little heavy for handheld work. Uh, you can hold it for just so long like this before you start feeling your uh, wrist starting to strain. And uh, when I did use it uh, on some extended shoots where I was going handheld, I did start bringing a wrist brace uh, just for protection. I've had wrist injuries before from cameras and car accidents, fun, fun things like that, so I want to protect it. If you can hold it like this with two hands uh, for a little bit, that's good, but really this camera is happiest on a tripod. Uh, monopods are also okay. You have to make sure the head will uh, take the weight. Uh, I was using it on one shoot on a monopod, and I think this was just a little bit too much for it, and at one point it kind of flopped. One of the things that sets this camera apart from some of the other ones in uh, the JVC series is that it uh, allows you to put a logo into the camera so you could kind of have that logo on your live feed as it's going out. So if you have a station logo, a uh, company logo, something like that, if you put the proper file into the camera, uh, you can make it come up. I unfortunately did not test that feature, but it's in here. It is a bit bulky for handheld things. I did take it while watching twice because I wanted to test some different features on it. The five second uh, uh, record cache. So you can set in the menu for it to be constantly recording five seconds. Uh, so then when you hit the record button, 
it puts that five seconds that was pre-recorded onto your file. So if something happens and you hit the button, normally you'd have missed the beginning of whatever event was about to happen. But with this camera, it's a great feature for wildlife, news, things like that. When you're waiting for something to happen and it happens and you didn't hit the record button quite close to, you've got a five second leeway that the camera was recording before you hit record. Think of the five second record cache as being able to go back in time five seconds and hit record uh, just before something happened. So it's a great feature. I have it enabled on this. It's a good camera. The only thing that I can really say I didn't like about it was it's just a little too big and bulky. Kept wanting to Put it on my shoulder and uh, doesn't work quite so good uh, like this. If uh, you're on a tripod, great camera. Handheld, not so much, but under $5,000 price, I'm not going to argue too much. It gives you a lot for the price and I recommend it. If uh, you need a stream and get everything in one package, this is a great tool. If you are uh, doing corporate communications, news gathering, worship production, educational production, uh, anybody who's got something where they need a live stream, this camera really is going to be helpful to you. If you have any questions, uh, please contact me through the information below and I'm happy to try and answer you. Uh, you can check this camera out on JVC's website, jvc.com. Look in the professional division.